Hey guys, been a little while, um, and I've got the power wall up and running, moved in the garage, so I'm going to do an update video on that, but um, I thought I'd do a, a short video. Now, don't all run away, it, <laughs> it is what it looks like, it's a bird box. Um, it's a friend's daughter, um, it's a birthday coming up, and she's particularly in her wildlife at the moment and what's in the garden, so um, after I chat with her when I was around uh, my friend's house and chat with her father, and um, decided make a birdhouse. So brought out Fusion, um, knocked something up quickly. Uh, I did have a look on Thingiverse, but one, it was a present, so I wanted to kind of make it a bit personalized, but then also two, the, uh, they were all quite funky, which is cool, but I just wanted something a bit more traditional. So knocked up this very simple birdhouse, um, just the bottom here. This is printed separately, and then you can just stick that through the inside and just super glue that on. Um, done two tabs on the back here, you can just do two screws on a post or a wall and hook it over and slot it down. Um, and I've made it modular so it's just got a lid. Just a groove, just kind of a friction fit and that fits in there, great. But, well, as this is kind of for electronics this channel in bits and pieces, I thought I can do better than that. So I then resorted to um, Fusion again and then came up with this um, which looks a bit beasty um, and the idea is that because I've done it modular you can take that one off and you can drop it um, and then this one pops on in its place and then the idea is you've got the camera here two infrared LEDs here to illuminate and then this wouldn't be protruding as far, but micro USB. So that leads to the question, what's inside? So, just designed it with four small screws. I'll just quickly take these out. Sorry, I could have had those ready. Um, and what I've done is, let me slide this out. I have put a Raspberry Pi 0W um, with an absolutely minuscule connection cable. Um, I've just designed the board here. Um, you can see that it's just got that ridge. That just points the Raspberry Pi up a little bit and that's kind of sympathetic to the, the slope of the roof there and that just fits in. Um, from another project I happen to have some of these little right angle micro USB to micro USB connector and then what I've done is I've just basically hollowed out the top in Fusion um, which is actually because it prints a bit better and maybe I should have done that in the first place because this is I've done a low infill but yeah so it uses some stuff so what I've done is I've basically then put a little support section here put four little tabs that come out and then what I've done is I've done these angled at about 45 degrees so the idea is that you print this flat on the base like that and um, so you get the best finish on the top unfortunately when I did this one there must have been something on the surface so it didn't stick but yeah so you end up doing that and then you still end up with that same gap around the edge when you fit this in here. Now, there's a gap here, but I have since redesigned the model, so that'll be, have a flat section. It'll still have the correct gap for fitting in, but yeah, so it does that, four little screw holes. Now, it could be argued that these need to be further in and such like, but to be honest, for what it's using, it, it's totally fine. I have put three small slits in there um, just to prevent condensation and such like. Um, maybe could put some in the side, but um, I'll see how that goes, but there's some in there anyway. What I have noticed is that this does get pretty hot, so it'll be interesting to see how it goes. But if it's living outside in the good old British weather, um, I think that'll have some natural cooling anyway, so that should be okay. Now, what I was really torn was, with, with was the powering. 
I really would have loved just to have a solar panel and I, I have got some solar panels around some six volt three and a half watt ones or six volt two watt ones and I would really love to have had it powered but when you work it out even the Pi Zero but because it's the W you've got the wireless the camera and the infrared LEDs they actually do use a, an okay amount of power so I was just doing the sums and it just wasn't possible so in the end it was going to have to be external powered now I did think about putting a power adapter inside so like a DC to DC converter so taking it from 12 volt or something like that and having a separate solar panel and such like but when I spoke to my friend I think what we would do is we just put it pretty close to a um, outdoor electrical socket to one of those fully waterproof ones um, and then just a regular you know the wall water type um, 5 volt adapters so what I did was I just made a small exit hole here the idea is this to be pushed through what I would probably envisage doing is and that should just curl around what I envisage doing is just hot gluing that in place and maybe it's even recessing it slightly and what I did do was I gave it wings <laughs> For want of a better description and that was just to try and make it so that the water is going to run off now it's never going to be perfect but you can see that it's recessed in a few mil um, and then if you plug the connector in um, I think that's going to work pretty well um, so just for testing I haven't hot glued that yet I'll push that out and I'll just put in just a couple of these screws just to keep it vaguely in place and then I can show you guys what it looks like And it's just into the plastic, so you don't want to over tighten it. Um, what I will be doing is I'll I've published the simple version of the bird box on Thingiverse. So what I'll be doing is I'll be publishing this more I'm not sure what to call it complex if that's possible for a bird box, but bird box are more advanced. So yeah, I've just put some straw in there. Um, one thing I will say is you need to adjust the focus of the camera and this is a third party camera and it's great so you can just do it by rotating the head there there's no messing around with the um, I think on the early Raspberry Pi ones you had to break some glue and then move them so yeah and then he should just sit on there um, I've got just a, a small power bank which is feasible I've got some pretty big power banks 20,000 milliamps technically if you waterproof one of those I'll put it in a waterproof bag dry sack or similar put that outside you could probably use that and rotate it around every few days maybe you say if you've got a 20,000 million hour so what I'm going to do is I'll just uh, bring this up on the phone um, I'm using motion eye which is a pre-done um, image which runs on the, uh, the, the Raspberry Pi um, it's all self-contained it's great you get a web interface um, and you can just download that as one thing you need a separate file for a Raspberry Pi as opposed to the say the Raspberry Pi 3 which I have tried it with and it works really well as well again that's got even higher power usage um, and then once you've got that up and running it's pretty cool because I can show this on the computer but then you just get uh, yeah it's basically the bird box and just to prove as my finger and said bird box and the beauty of the motion eye is that you can configure it so that if you get alerts it'll uh, detect movement sorry and it'll send you an alert um, you can do it as an email and then it can attach some of the images which i um, short clip um, as an email which is fantastic um, or you can just have it like this and then you could just connect to the web page so what I'm envisaging is my, my friend's daughter and um, she's got a small tablet and um, so she can go on there and anytime she wants she can check out and see if a bird went in there and hopefully they'll have a bird nest and then she'll be able to check that out um, so yeah so what I'll do is I'll flip over the computer and I'll show how I did the imaging um, in the, the software I used um, and we'll go through that hey guys um, so as I mentioned earlier you're gonna need the um, image file for the Raspberry Pi now you be you need to be careful that you get the correct one so if you go to the GitHub page uh, for Motion iOS, there's a version of the Raspberry Pi, um, the AB and the classic versions. That also includes the zero, zero W. 
So I fell foul of using an image that I'd used for Raspberry Pi 3 previously, um, and that just failed to boot um, and headless. It's a bit of a pain because you can't see. Um, so what you need to do is just make sure you get that 0W model, um, download that, um, and you can see I've done that in the bottom left there. Um, and then we're going to then need something to write that to the micro SD card. Um, the application we are going to use is called um, Etcher. Um, so we will go here. This is the, the URL. I'll place this um, all the links at the bottom. Um, but basically, this is great, and that allows you to um, burn an image to an SD card that you don't have to extract or unarchive, um, which is just so much much of a pain when you download these image files and then you've got to extract them and take a lot more space but with this you can just get the application um, it's confusing because it looks very much like the web page um, so you, I'll just drag the um, the image file into the window there um, you're then gonna select the drive now you'll need a micro SD adapter on your machine so I've got a 32 gig micro SD card plugged in kind of overkill but that's fine um, so then you would just go to flash and then that will start to burn the image um, and it will also verify it and eject the drive when it's finished. Um, like I mentioned this is just it, it's been a bit of a godsend and it's so much quicker for when you're working with these images and you can see that it, it's going through it's a pretty small image so it's quite quick um, it does tie up the Raspberry Pi that you're using so you can't use it for anything else really um, but that's fine for my uh, requirements um, so we'll just get rid of this page um, and then what we'll do is that's the page for etcher again um, that's, there you go flash complete you do that like I mentioned it'll eject the drive so you'll have to um, unplug it and plug it back in um, what you'll then need to do is if you're going to use this Wi-Fi which I presume is most people so that's why I've used the Raspberry Pi 0W and it's important to get that W model um, you're then going to have to because it's headless configure up the wireless um, using the um, supplicant.conf or supplicantwa.conf that I mentioned so you'll end up with two drives after you've flashed it this is the one where we need to place the, the file so you would create a, a new file. You may need to enable in Windows to be able to see the, um, the suffix of .txt. Um, this is a guide I found which I'll not reinvent the wheel and it takes you through all the steps. Um, that's the file you need to create, the wa underscore supplicant.conf. Um, it's got everything in there. I'll link that again down below. Um, you then create that file um, if you're not in the US you need to change that so for the UK it's GB for the country code you then set your SSID, set your password um, and then that's the information created and then what you'll do is the next time you boot off the Raspberry Pi it'll process that file and it'll automatically join the network so you need to place it in the same directory as this one here um, which you can see there the boot code .bin and such like are in that folder um, and once you've done that it processes it, it deletes the file so if you go back and wonder why it's not there um, it's a kind of a one time affair and it gets rid of it um, and once it's done that um, like I say it'll join your network you want to go on your router and just check what IP address you're using um, yep so that would be where you do the file and then if this sounds a bit strange just because I've had to record the audio over the video again because I lost the file and this is the third time doing it. Um, so once it's done it's on your network and you go to the IP address which you found from your router and there you go. Um, and I can put my finger through the box um, and you can see it there um, and it, it should focus on that um, okay hopefully but I think that quality looks pretty good. Um, it's not bad. I'm quite impressed that it works, and it, it, it you know, the IR LEDs mean it's obviously in a dark location, but it'll work through the night as well. Um, I've got it configured so that it sends um, emails 
with um, image attachments so that you get to see. There you go, sorry, this is the point where I put my finger through and you get to see. Um, and yeah, one thing I did have to do was I had to get a um, wide angle camera, the IR camera, um, because otherwise that just wasn't going to, um, well it was focused too, too narrow on the box, so even though it's a very small box you could only see the centre. Um, I was just showing you the settings there you can go in. If you're going to put this public face into the internet, you want to go through and you want to change all those settings um, just to block it off. And it's not something I'd really recommend, but it works great for at home. So I'm quite impressed with this and um, I'm really quite happy. So um, I hope someone finds this useful. Um, if you do a build, let us know. Um, I'll put the Thingiverse page up. Like I mentioned, I'll put all the links down below. Um, so um, cheers for watching, guys. Like I say, I hope it's useful. Um, like and subscribe. Cheers.